So getting recognized was that it, it kind of grew. Summer school kind of grew. It didn't、uh, was immediately huge. I didn't have any trouble with it. I kind of liked it. <laughs> Welcome to Story and Craft. Now here's your host, Mark Preston. Well, hello. How are you? I'm Mark Preston. Thank you so much for stopping back by and、uh, checking out Story and Craft. Glad to have you back here. Hey, and by the way, if you're new to the show. Thank you too. Appreciate you coming by. Also, I want to thank、uh, everyone who has checked out、uh, the、uh, show on YouTube. Just took the entire library and put it on YouTube.、Uh, apparently, YouTube's doing a lot more with podcasts these days. So, hey, we're there or here, depending on where you're listening.、Uh, and in fact, if you would do me a small favor. It would be really cool if you could pop by. It's、uh, youtube.com forward slash at story and craft. You know the little at sign story and craft,、uh, or you can just search YouTube for the story and craft podcast. You will find it.、Uh, do me a favor if you would. Go ahead and subscribe, like, and. I don't know. You smash the button or ring the bell. I don't know. You do some stuff with YouTube, <laughs> but all I want you to do is just go ahead and subscribe, and of course, ring that little bell thing. That way, you know when a new episode comes out. So if you like listening to this show on YouTube, you can do that. But of course, we would love to just have you subscribe, be a part of the family, if you will.、Uh, this week on the show, really looking forward to、uh, letting you in on this one.、Uh, Fabiana Udinio, Italian actress, so charming. Really enjoyed the chat. She's in the new Netflix show Foo Bar. She plays Arnold Schwarzenegger's wife. Cool show, enjoying it quite a bit.、Uh, and of course,、uh, she is well known for us '80s kids as Anna Maria Mazzarelli, the Italian exchange student in the movie Summer School with Mark Harmon, a classic of the '80s.、Uh, and of course, as always, the Story and Craft Pod website. Everything about the show,、uh, the socials.、Uh, you can shoot me a note.、Uh, Pretty much everything. Just go to storyandcraftpod. dot com. Once again, storyandcraftpod. dot com. Okay, so let's get after it today. It's Fabiana Udinio. I just like saying her name. Let me say it again. Fabiana Udinio. The name just kind of rolls off the tongue. <laughs> okay, it's Fabiana Udinio Day right here on Story and Craft. So, how's your day going so far? It's going well. It's going well. I was a little bit of an unexpected uh, uh, thing happening, but right now. But other than that, it's going great. We're number one.、Uh, uh, you're number one. The Foo Bar is number one. And- Foo Bar. Oh yeah, <laughs> I just watched the first episode last night.、Uh, thoroughly enjoyed it. And I have to say, you're the second on-screen、uh, spouse I've interviewed. <laughs> about Arnold Schwarzenegger is、uh, going all the way back to ninety. Four, I think I interviewed Jamie Lee Curtis for、uh, True Lies. So you're the second、oh. Schwarzenegger spouse I've had the opportunity to chat with. But、uh, right, <laughs> you're in LA, right? Yes. So how long have you been living in LA? Forever, it seems like forever. Because I initially came to the United States、um, late '80s, and I lived in New York for a year. And then after that, I was doing a soap opera in New York. Then I came to Los Angeles, and then I did summer school, and I. Kind of stayed. I went back and forth from Italy to、uh, to work for a while, and then I came here. But generally,、um, so it's been since the late eighties. How long has that been? Too much to count.、Uh, I, I don't. I don't really don't、so, want to think about how long it's been. Me、uh, neither. So thank you. We're on the same boat. There, there's some movies that I that occasionally show up and、uh, you know on streaming. I'm like, okay, I got to show my daughter that. You know, they are like they're teenagers. A couple are in college now, and I will say, my 17 year old loves the Austin Powers movies. Oh,、uh, she is familiar with. And、you. that is 26 years. I mean, it's crazy. It's it's hard to get my head around that. Right? Time is funny stuff. Yeah.、Uh, but yeah, you you originally from Italy, but I, I thought I read somewhere didn't weren't you born in Argentina? I was. I was. Yes. I was born in Argentina. My、uh, my parents are Italian, but my dad went to Argentina to join his father, who had a company there, and so they they got married really young. My parents went to Argentina with my sister, who was one year old, and they stayed there for fifteen years. So I was born there, stayed there until I was six or seven, or depending on whether I.、Um, Yes, and then I and then they went back to Italy, and and so I my upbringing was in Italy, my schooling and all. Was what, what kind of work was your、uh, father doing in Argentina, he, or what was his trade? He, they were they were importing and exporting、um, uh, photographic equipment.、Um, 
So, and they were doing pretty well. But, you know, in Argentina, the economical and political uh, system goes up and down. So I think there was a crash political everything and so my mother I think it was my mother at the time that decided that decided I wanted to go back and my dad kind of maybe didn't want to uh, but they went back to Italy and I, so I had family over there in Argentina. what was it was it Pinochet was that who it was back then it, uh, it was Peron but, but, but I, I, I conflate sometimes Chilean history and Argentinian history but but uh, it's a I, I've always thought it'd be a beautiful place I've always wanted to go to Argentina um, and uh, just eat Really, I'm, I, from what I understand, they like meat down there. So. Yes, Argentina, <laughs> um, it's, it's, it's great. It's a combination with, with South America and, it, and Italy. Uh, and I, I still remember the nightlife over there. The, you know, I still remember my parents going to, uh, to a, a midnight movie. Um, you know, like, uh, so there's a, this great nightlife and yes, the meat, the carne asada, the, these barbecues with carne asada is amazing. I've really had lunch yet. So that's why I'm thinking about food right now. I'm thinking Argentina. <laughs> so you better not think about Italy. It's even worse. It's even better the food over there in Italy. I mean, it's- oh, absolutely. Now where in Italy did you grow up? Rome. Rome, okay, so cacio e pepe was the kind of the thing you were eating there. I cacio e pepe, come no, certo, cacio e pepe, matriciana, carbonara. Uh, I'm getting hungry too now. <laughs> so how old were you when you came over to the U.S.? Funny, initially I came with the, in 1984 for the Olympic Arts Festival. I was uh, doing um, The Tempest uh, with this very famous theater company um, in Italy, directed by Strella, and we toured the world. We, we went to Paris, and we went in, in 1984, we came to the Olympic Arts Festival. So we came to New York. And that was in L.A., correct? That was in L.A., yes. We uh, performed at the Royce Hall, Hall, Royce Hall, I can still remember it, um, at UCLA. And then we went to New York. So that was my first time um, coming to the States. And then a year after, I was cast uh, in 85, 85, 86, uh, I was cast to, um, to, to play this character in One Life to Live. So I went to New York for a year. And I played a uh, this character, a, a regular, uh, um, and, and on the soap opera One Life to Live. So I got to experience that for a year, and I really wanted to stay, you know, in the states. But um, I didn't know whether that was going to be possible. So I, I I went from New York to Los Angeles, and and in within two months I got the movie Summer School, which I'm sure your kids, <laughs> I don't know. Oh no, no, you know that. I will say my thing. My sons watched it, but for me as a Gen X kid, it's on the Mount Rushmore of of movies from back because everybody wanted Mark Harmon to be their summer school teacher after that movie. And I think I think after you were in it, I think there's probably thousands of young men that were petitioning their parents to <laughs> can we do a, a foreign exchange student for the year? You know, <laughs> so um, coming from Rome and doing that movie and just walking around L.A. What was it like when you first started getting recognized? People knew who you were. What was that like? Was that a little bit odd for you to be recognized at that point? It, 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 actually, when I was doing the soap opera in New York, that was um, interesting because uh, the soap operas had kind of a following. So they, they were asking, especially at the ABC studios right there in Lincoln Center, they were asking for autographs and stuff like So I was Julieta, Julieta. Um, doing summer school, getting cast in that, uh, the the, the the biggest emotion was just to go to the Paramount Studios and just see the, the Paramount sign and going into the, the Paramount Studios. Um, so that was uh, that was a kick, um, and um, and yeah. So getting recognized was that um, it, it kind of grew. Summer school kind of grew. It didn't uh, was immediately huge. Um, so, but I I didn't have any trouble with it. I kind of liked it. <laughs> What were you wanting to do when you were young? Was it always a track of performance of some sort? Yes, I always wanted, I don't know, since I was seven years, eight, nine, I wanted to be an actress. I want, I was, my, my sister who's older than me tells me that I was uh, um, imitating commercials all the time. And I just, you know, <laughs> I don't know. And then I was 11 or 12, I wanted to do, I took acting classes. I did a little theater in um, the neighborhood. And then um, I, I won Miss Teen Italy um, when I was 
12 and a half. That's Italian for you. Really? Was, really? That wasn't even, that's, that's, that's not quite legal. But, you know, so they wanted to take the title away from me because I don't know if it's right or wrong. I don't know legally what it would be um, because I, I'm born in December and I think the title of the, the, the competition was before my birthday. So I wasn't quite a teenager technically, but I kept the title because, you know, there's... But still in Italy, being that young... And having, uh, was it really, was it, I mean, obviously it's a big competition, but it, was it something that gave you an aspect of notoriety to people say, oh, this girl Fabiana, you know, she's only 12 or 13, but 13, you know, she's, yeah. a, was it a big deal or? Yeah, it was, it was, it was a big deal. It was sort of a, like in a pageant kind of a way, uh, without any sort of way, you know, like a, like, you know, there is still a talent competition, but it's still like, it's a pageant. But what happened to me right after I got cast in The Tempest to play Mirana, that was a big deal. The theater director, Giorgio Strelis, he's like, a, he was um, an icon of the theater all over Europe. And so to be cast so young in that sort of gave me um, 360 in a way of prestige and uh, weight as an actor. And for a while, that's all I wanted to do. I wanted to do theater. Uh, I wanted to play. was it intimidating for you at all being that young and then jumping into this this thing and getting that kind of recognition it was um, I was completely in love with theater and I was so passionate and it was I yes that's all I, I wanted to be Juliet after that it was intimidating but I was I worked so hard he gave me a lot of confidence um, he's, he, he's he's a maestro of that but he did like me, he did like the fact that I was so raw, raw and, and young. And Miranda, much like Ju- Juliet, Juliet, Juliet and Miranda, they are, she is very young. And, and so there, there were some qualities that he was able to, to, um, to use of, of the young, you know, the, the innocence of this, that I was bringing to the stage, to the table, uh, f- just for the fact that who I was and how hard I was working. I mean, I was going to school, I was working hard, and I, I just absolutely loved it. That's all I wanted to do. But then after the theater, um, I started falling in love with uh, with American cinema and method acting and Stanislas. Well, before that, were you into things like Fellini and, you know, were you really into the, 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 the Italian cinema or was this... Theater. What was your what was your introduction to cinema? What was your introduction? Was it the was it the Italian stuff or was the the American stuff? What had the most impact on you? After the theater, it was the American stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sort of. When what I, were you well, like? What kind of movies were you watching? You know, I mean, you, you, maybe Kramer versus Kramer with Mary Strip, and I, and I think my parents were getting divorced, and and at the time I can't remember the year, but the, or the or uh, uh, the one with Robert De Niro, Mary Strip, the other the head hunt. Uh, Oh my goodness! The famous movie with uh, Robert De Niro and Meryl Streep, uh, Il, uh, Il Cacciatore, the the Russian roulette thing. Oh my God! I can't come up with the name, the title. Uh, anyway, so um, uh, Robert De Niro. I'm sure somebody will research that real quick and find out. The movie with De Niro was called Il Cacciatore in Italian. Um, Cacciatore. Il Cacciatore. Okay. The, um, the hunter. The... Anyway, yeah, I, 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 I'm kind of at that age where I just, I just assume I'm going to forget. Whenever I try, my brain tries to actively remember a name. Is when my brain goes, "No, you're not going to be able to do that," <laughs> which is embarrassing when you're out with people and you're trying to introduce them, and your brain goes, "Nope, you're not oh going to remember God, their name right I'm now." Terrible <laughs> names, terrible names. Now, what were were your parents embracing this thing you were doing? Were they like, you know, because you know, here you're doing this pageant, you're doing, uh, you're, you're, you're. you're I'm assuming that the theater thing, that, that was a touring thing. Yes. That just wasn't at one theater. So what, were your parents okay with that or were they hesitant? My mother had to follow me uh, because the structure in Italy, they, they weren't so accustomed to underage performers. Like here you have a whole system of, you know, like schooling and rules. Uh, it, it wasn't so much, I don't know how it is right now for somebody that's underage, but at the time it wasn't. So my mother had to follow me. And my mother completely embraced it, but it wasn't, she wasn't like the stage mom, uh, because it was my passion. So she, she, she supported me, but it, but it didn't come from her. It really came from me. And then she, of course she supported me and my sister, uh, liked writing. Um, and so I used to, when I was invited, uh, in Italy to TV shows and talk shows, I used to recite her poems 
And some, so that was, uh, she stopped doing that, but she was a really, really uh, talented writer for, she did, wrote poems and things. But they did, so my mom did embrace it and did support me, but it didn't come from her. She didn't push me, not even for the teen thing. I, it was my, my wanting to do it. Yeah. Well, where, where did your interest come from though? I mean, how, what was the genesis of that? Was it a, were you a precocious child? I mean, were you, or were you shy when you were growing I up? I think I was full of energy. Not shy when I was growing up. I think I became a little bit more shy later. And I think maybe acting or performing, it always it's always been my therapy and escape. Every time I was, nothing mattered. And it was catapulting me in a, in a state of happiness and escape. It's like the great escape. I never did any call. It's just the... the and I think it stayed that way throughout my life. It's it's this outlet, amazing outlet, and fun, uh, addictive uh, escape. That's like it. Well, that's the thing. You know, I I, I coach a lot of uh, you know some students, even actors in L.A. on a voiceover. And I and I always say when you shut the door in that sound booth, the whole world stays outside. And it says just like when you're on camera, you can disappear for a moment. And it, to me, it's a little, it's cathartic. It's 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 uh, you can kind of disappear and use your imagination to be more kid like. Absolutely true, true. And I love voiceover too. Oh, I noticed you you did do some of I that did, yourself. I did here and I did a lot of it in Italy, but but here too. And when you do voice service, it's even more because you don't have to even, work, not even more or less, but you don't have to worry about your look. It's just sometimes very liberating. You know, you go with your whatever. And you, so it's a different, but I love all sides of, of the craft. I really do. Did your sister follow you into, into entertainment at all or did she go a different path? No, she went a different path. She, uh, she liked traveling. So she was um, a flight attendant and she traveled, she traveled a lot more than I did. Um, you know, my daughter, my 17 year old really wants to, she has this whole plan. You know, she grad, she did both her junior and senior year together, just wrapped them up and, uh, she's very smart. And she said she wants to travel. So she wants to do travel as a flight attendant early. She's smart. She's, I'll do it in my early twenties. And if I decide it's not for me, then I got the degree. I can go do something else. But if I like it, I'm just going to keep doing it. I'll have seniority. And, but she, she, and you know, I, I grew up in Dallas uh, where the, you know, you have American airlines based there and I met all kinds of flight attendants and I always envied their lifestyle. They could just go jump on a plane and go somewhere if they wanted to. My sister would love it. She was based in Italy. She was working for Alitalia and then Alitalia, like many things, uh, in Italy went sort of bankrupt. So they downsized and she, she, she went into retirement from her job a little early, and she missed it for a long time. I missed it, too, because I used to get all these tickets, free tickets, uh, <laughs> and all these, uh, um, you know, like, perks. The family tickets that they get? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. And, and, uh, I missed it, too. You know, I was very spoiled for a while, living here and going there just for an audition or, or to, you know, whatever. <laughs> Now, when you came here, you you were doing the thing a lot of American actors do. They have their their, their the, the kickoff of their career on uh, soap operas. And I remember I remember my grandmother when I was I was always over at their house at least once a week, uh, stay over, and then uh, she was watching General Hospital, and I think One Life to That's Live. That's the one I did. And yeah, and so it's like I became very aware of the character. I mean, more than probably a eight, nine, ten year old kid should. But I think that a lot of kids grew up like that, you know. But a lot of those actors then, and I've interviewed a number of them that who are doing really well now that had their start uh, in soap opera. And the the funny thing about that is how fast you have to learn the scripts. I mean, there were there any challenges when you went from doing stage to doing soap opera? You had got a new script frequently, and you have to learn it pretty quick. Was that a challenge for you? Absolutely. Yeah. And then the, the language, because they cast me in Italy. They, you know, I, they were on location, and I was supposed to. The, this character was supposed to be working for you know, a couple of weeks, and then they liked it, and they offered me the contract. So I went, well, go to New York, and l- loved the idea. But the work was hard because, yes, you do have to learn all of that fast. And it was another language. So usually when you're in command of the language, if you forget a line, you kind of like work around it. And you, but I, I, if I forgot the line, I couldn't replace it. With well, you could improv in Italian and kind of yeah, give it a little something nice. extra. Yes, <laughs> but it was a little bit more challenging because you don't have a, a, a word that you can substitute and, and go on with the line or, 
or work around it. So I, I, it, it, it was, but it, it taught me, um, it, it was great um, practice for improving the language, English. Now, summer school had to come, and that was 87, I think. Was that roughly 87, 86, 87? What was filming that like? As, you know, me as a Gen X kid, I think anybody listening to this who is of a similar age to me, is, they're going to be like, if I don't ask, I'm going to get in trouble. What was it like shooting uh, that film? Uh, you know, that I guess y'all shot during the summer, I'm assuming. It, it, was it the summer? It wasn't that warm, but I can't remember when it was what time of the year, maybe late summer, or because it wasn't really hot. I remember being on the beach. Well, then again, in Southern California, it always looks like yeah, summer. Right. So. so, but I remember the water was cold and I remember I was cold. So, but it could happen that it was a cold day. I just remember being cold, but um, it, it was great. Carl Reiner uh, it was like a father figure for all of us. And Oh, that's right. That's right. He he only had a very small role at the very beginning, but he directed that. Totally forgot about he that. He directed that movie, yes. And Jeff Franklin from uh, Full House wrote it. And um, so Carl Reiner directed it. And, and it was just a very, a very fun set to be around. And um, you felt completely safe. And the, he allowed us to improvise. And Mark Harmon was a class act. But all the kids... They had a they had a lot of fun. The two chainsaw and uh, we actually just had a, a autograph signing and they all uh, were talking about how, how about how much they were having fun and I was having fun too. But uh, much like my character, my 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 uh, command of the language, especially when it's about comedy, wasn't a hundred percent. So a lot of the stuff that, that we're laughing about, I, I didn't really get. Uh, and so I was, sometimes I was feeling left out of the, of the joke. Well, I think that probably was what was part of the humor of the film. Like you weren't totally getting, especially when they were showing you the horror film. Yes, it was, you yes, know, it was yes. like, okay, how's she going to digest that She loves it. Okay. Yes. Um, and, and, uh, all the, uh, the, the, it was a talented cast. These kids were, ta- you know, and, and, and Carl Reiner, just a father figure for all. I mean, it was a really uh, wonderful, warm, welcoming uh, set. I just am so envious you had a chance to act uh, with and for Carl yes. Reiner. That you know everybody in his family seems to be as uh, talented as well. Yes. Uh, but yes. so so do you? St- are you still recognized for that? Uh, of, of the <laughs> cool. things you've done when people meet you, what is it that they like? immediately jump to or uh when it comes to things on your resume it's, it's so hard sometimes you some sometimes you go you look familiar and you don't want to go through your resume because you you're just going to start going and then maybe they know you because you were shopping in the same market or something but you, so the, the the thing that for a while it was summer school and then uh it was awesome powers um uh so that's probably the one that and uh, when I'm when I'm not dressed up or no makeup or anything, people kind of they, they can't quite place it because I look so different. Um, so I mean, I look yes, so so natural that they can't quite put two and two together with that. Uh, and then some people uh, more recently uh, were very very big fans of Jane the Virgin, so that had a, a really f- loyal following. And um, so they were thinking of me. They were thinking about that one when they were when they were seeing me. Um, or is there a preference you've had over the years since you have had so many years of experience, different kind of projects? Do you prefer the comedy thing, or do you prefer more dramatic roles, or is, is it really make that much of a difference to you? I, I, I prefer drama. I think comedy is really hard. And um, because you never know until you see with an audience whether it, whether it works or not. Um, but I've, I have a, a, a good sense of humor and I've, I've done a lot of work in comedy. I've done a lot of work in sitcoms. I mean, I was able to survive as an actor doing a lot of sitcoms uh, and comedy because it's hard to find a, a woman at the time. You know, if you're attractive and you can do comedy, you can kind of find a, 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 a niche. Um, and so... So I, I've, uh, I've used that and I've, but my, my essence is more for the drama thing. Well, actually the first episode of FUBAR, you, you weren't really 
focusing on any comedy. It was kind of it's kind of you were a little serious, you know. We've only seen, oh, the, first only seen the first episode, so we, uh, yes, first episode, yeah. Uh, you know, when I'm watching TV with my, my 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 daughter, usually we have to kind of vary it up. You know, one episode uh, for daddy and then something for her, you know. Uh, while she's on her phone, she's half paying attention, uh-huh. you know. Now, now, do you have any uh, kids as well? Or I do. Um, I have a lot in common with my, my character, with, uh, with, uh, with Tally. I do have a son. And I, I did for a long time. I'm a single mom. I'm divorced. And I for a long time, I did put family first. You know, I, I had to sort of prioritize um what how to 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 do that if you want to delegate parenthood or if you want to do it yourself how, how old is your son he's 17 now i got one of those flavors also got a 17 year old also yes, um, yes. so what what is it like for you now he's probably looking at college and looking at what's next he's looking, my son is uh my son is on the autism spectrum so he's yes so so that's why it took a little bit more involvement on my side on my side to to uh to allow him to blossom and and grow, especially at the beginning. You know, early intervention is very crucial. So I decided that that was going to be my priority. And um, it had its challenges and amazing rewards. And so he's doing great. He loves to travel and he speaks Italian and English. What what does he think about his mother seeing you on? Is he impressed whenever he sees you on shows now, maybe things you've done in the past? Or is he like, just like, okay, mom does this thing, you know? You know what he loves the most is Baywatch. (laughs) And I don't know why. And so now he loved the Baywatch that he saw. Like, and now he loves the uh, the remake that they did from Baywatch. So you know he loves surfing and everything. So he was really impressed by the Baywatch. And um, he does like it with this whole thing and Fubar and everything. He was kind of a little worried that it was going to disrupt his regular schedule of him going to Italy in the summer. You know, when after the school is done. So he's mostly more self. You know, like. Is this going to change anything? What's go- what is this? What is the big deal? And so, well, well kids on the spectrum don't they typically th- thrive and really like a, a more of a routine based, you know, lifestyle? Yes. Yeah. So when I started involving him, uh, like, oh my god, I could do. We could do this in Acapulco. We could. So because he enjoyed being in Toronto with me filming, he actually. And when I started involving him too much on sort of the roller coaster that could can be being an actor and auditioning, I saw that you know, that wasn't for him. He, he, you know, I better keep it. It's hard enough for me to know maybe I'll go there, maybe and maybe not. Maybe I'll get this, maybe not. That I could see that it was stressful for him to think of me maybe and maybe not and, and, and him being... The actor's life isn't for everybody. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so it's okay if I know that I'm going to do something and tell him, but not if I... Maybe we'll be doing this. Maybe I, I realized that that wasn't the right thing to go. And uh, since this is such a big thing happening in my life. Uh, well, did you score any points saying, you know, I'm going to be acting with Arnold Schwarzenegger? Did, you do, <laughs> did that like land on him, with him at all? Yes. But unfortunately, because of COVID, there wasn't a lot of uh, interaction. People weren't allowed on the set. So it was very, so he didn't have a lot of interaction like he would have wanted to hang out on the set. And I um, sort of missed that that could have been great if, if he could have come more, you know. Uh, but both him and my mom, who uh, came to Toronto to kind of give me a hand with all of that. Uh, oh, that's that's wonderful. Your mother can still come over and... Uh, my mother did. She's, she, yeah, she, that's wonderful. she was very crucial for my being able to focus completely on the, on the job. Well, here's the thing. I, I mean, I have to ask because still, I have, as I mentioned before, I have not had lunch, so I'm just deeply interested <laughs> in food. Now, do, is your mother, does she have the Italian mother cooking skills? She's a great cook. Uh, I'm not. So Tally has a lot in common with me. The only thing you'll see throughout the episode, she's always like kind of cooking something great. And uh, that was a stretch. <laughs> like, luckily, you only have to fake it. I'm not. I, when, I, when I cook, I, you know, it tastes good. Um, I cook for my son or not for my, uh, it take, but I don't enjoy it. So the process, but my mom really, does. really, well, I think that's the thing. Some people can get it done, but they don't enjoy it. For me, cooking is almost therapeutic. It's relaxing. <laughs> you know. I know, I'm so stressed. I don't care. Whenever I used to watch Anthony Bourdain, I used to uh, love when he would go to Spain or Italy. I, Cause I'd love watching the older ladies cook because there's just this, this, this 
it just watching an Italian mother cook to me was is just like I just get into it for some of reason. Course. But um, now, what I got to know, what is your favorite? What it, uh, you know, what is kind of a, a dish that uh, your mother makes or something when you go back home? You're like, I need this. This is something I, I need the real deal, authentic. She's always mad at me because I I don't eat a lot of pasta. You know, I've always I've had the same weight all of my life, so she was always telling me that. I snack a lot and maybe I eat in the middle of the night, I'm kind of a mess eater. So she's always mad at me because I don't eat as much as an Italian daughter should eat. You know, like they would feed you all day long, uh, her whole family. Like, Tell her if she wants an additional adopted son, I, I'm totally, I'll, I'll eat your portion of pasta. <laughs> That'd be totally fine. She's, uh, what does she make that's really good? She can make really good matriciana. You know, with the bacon, the red sauce, and the chicken, and she can really good. And she's actually very good overall cook. She can make a good uh, pasta le vongole, you know, vongole pasta. She's really good. Oh, I don't think I've ever had that. Yeah, with the clams. I'm sure you did. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I've had. Yeah. See, I grew up at a time when they had the American style of Italian. You know, where you have a lot of red sauce on everything, whereas the Italian Italian, the sauce is there for a little bit of flavor, but the, the pasta is kind of the main yes. thing. And it's, it's not the sauce. No, like not that. Not not swimming in all of that with all the meatballs. You can. Yeah, it's more like a. Most of the times, it's like a, a ragu. You know, like small pieces, and then you don't get the big meatballs and the huge plates and. Yeah, it, All you can I, I'm with you though. If I if I eat the amount of bucatini and you know, the pasta bucatini, that I would like to have, yeah. weight would. Oh, I love bucatini. My mom does yeah, that, those too. Uh, yes, yes. You know, I actually when I made the cacio e pepe, I actually do, I like to do it with bucatini. I just like that new. I used to live three doors down from an Italian grocery, oh. uh, and this husband and wife, and they 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 made. Um, I don't know if you. I don't know if it's an American Italian thing or Italian Italian, but a muffalata sandwich. Uh, it's, it uses like uh, chopped up olives and olive oil as like a. Dra- it's a whole thing. It, it, and um, was this in Dallas? This is in uh, actually this is in New Orleans. New Orleans. It's, in fact, when Anthony Bourdain came to New Orleans, it's a little grocery. If anybody travels to New Orleans, you got to come. It's in a area called Old Metairie. Uh, it's a uh, it's a this beautiful big sandwich, mortadella and and. Uh, all these meats, and, and it's totally not good for you, but it tastes amazing. But when Anthony Bourdain came into came to New Orleans, he went to this little grocery three doors down from my house, uh, where I went to go buy my olive oil and everything. And in <laughs> fact, I used to make, grow all of my own herbs, my uh, basil and oregano. And the lady who owned it couldn't; she killed everything that she tried to grow. So I said, "Tell you what, I'll make you a trade. I'll bring you over. I'll pot up some." basil for you and so we had this uh, italian olive oil for basil trade going on for a couple of years so i'd bring her herbs and she'd give me olive oil so <laughs> I'm, i just don't eat a lot of you know i eat i don't eat as much uh pasta as you as you as you would um i'm pretty disciplined with that i mean i'm mostly like uh so it's not as but it but italian food it's, it's so good the the, the ingredients uh uh, the main ingredients are something that you can't find here. And I think I can cook, you know, I put myself down and I have a bad reputation, but, but, um, uh, but if I, if I do it, it tastes good. Cause I've seen enough of it around me. My mom, her sister, my aunt makes things from scratch. I remember uh, her making pasta from scratch. I mean, really serious, like uh, lasagna, cannelloni, the whole thing from scratch. These, uh, of, uh, sweet, uh, the frappe that you make for uh, carnival. I mean, she she did everything. She was, uh, cakes. So I've seen her. Grew up seeing her. So I I can do it. I just never. I I don't understand how it could be relaxing. You know, I, I worry about how it's gonna taste. And if people are gonna like it, and well, well, you see, over here everybody's gonna love it. But I think you think <laughs> if this is back home, then you're gonna be graded on your cooking, you know. But when you came to America, what was what was your first experience like going to an In and Out Burger or something really American? What was that like for you when you had your first literal and figurative taste of American culture or whatever have you? Well, New York is sort of cosmopolitan. Um, the uh, the the so having. The international, having sushi for the first time in New York, I remember I never didn't even know, and, and here was already um, popular. Uh, I remember the the concept of all you can eat was uh, <laughs> that's a uniquely <laughs> American thing. Yeah. Was weird, and so I thought, and I, you know, when if you don't have a lot of, if you think all you can eat, you you are kind of like, well, I have to eat a lot, so I would like 
not eat so I could ha have all you can eat. I could eat more and try everything. So trying all these things in a salad bar. Or I remember I gained a whole bunch of weight in New York doing that soap opera. That's true. Just remember. But you had fun, though. You yes, I would yourself. go down when, you know, uh, to the to the the salad bar that opened late at night and fill up the salad with all these things. And, uh, yes, I thought. And then when I came to Los Angeles, what it was really fun were the Mexican restaurants. Uh, that was. Oh, yeah. So you really, you decided to stay in, uh, in L.A. So do you enjoy the, the vibe of L.A. or do you find at some point in time, maybe you'll want to return to Italy or maybe explore other parts of the U.S. or do you, do you really like it? I, I see, I'm assuming for as long as you've been there, you must like it there. I, I do. I, yes, I did like the um, relaxed uh, feeling of going out on your, with your flip-flops and whatever you want, nobody would care. Italy is a little different. Um, or if the colors don't match, or you know, like, you know, I did like the professional quality of the business. It, you know, I liked the. It's it's an unpredictable business. But when I was growing up in Italy, um, there was a lot of nepotism and a lot of uh, my God, talk about me too. You multiply that, you 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 exponentially in Italy. So I didn't like, it just didn't make any, most of the times auditions didn't matter and it's who you know, how do you know them and, and all of that really didn't uh, fly well for me. Here I, I was finding that I was more appreciated and respected, uh, although it wasn't my life, funny enough. So every time I would go, I would work a little bit, but it, but it, it didn't really click or I would have some great audition and somebody else would get it because they were this or that. And so that kind of stung me and here it was more predictable it was more competitive and more predictable so I liked the uh, business aspect and the fact that um, I was respected for what my, it was your audition for things and over there you don't oh it did it's different now Well, it's, you see, here it's you know it's it's really interesting the way things have evolved because when you were young, uh, your teens or early twenties, it was different than now. If you have two actors of equal talent, but one has twenty thousand people follow on ah. on Instagram, another one has ten million, that's going to factor in. It's a whole different world than it used to be, and I can't imagine having to be an actor and working nonstop and keeping up with social media and all that is is that I'm a, is learning. It? <laughs> I'm just learning now between <laughs> it's so I like coughing just thinking about it. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, the the tagging and the and the mentioning and the and then I try hard and then I see someone else doing something so creative and I go, how do you do that? And then I do it wrong. I mean it's really hard and I enjoy it. It, it is addictive. And you've got to learn, you have to be open, but there is something um, sort of contradictory to being an actor and getting out of yourself, to having to talk about what you have for breakfast and just self and, and just everything that to me, but I'd rather not, I'd rather, you know, so... Yeah, there, there's that, that the mystique of the performer that I think makes like you look at the a De Niro or Pacino or those guys there. You don't see them on. I don't assume they're on social media a lot, um, but it's 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 kind of like something we I mean, we want a little bit more of the person than just the two hours on the film. But at the same time, we still like that mystique being there. I think maybe that's part of our personalities. I'm not sure. And, 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 um, and it's not something that it's it's not that much. It's it's more work than actually acting to have to think about you know that's actually tedious for me to have to post and tag and repost and and it's it's fun and and so you're making me feel so good right now because i have to do that with with this show and the other things i do i have to do i'm like oh, i just don't want to right what do i say i don't know I, what picture do i post i mean i you know and my daughter my 17 year old with the interesting thing is she doesn't want me taking her picture or posting anywhere oh. she only looks she doesn't post oh. she's the anti-teenager in that way i was thinking the anti-influencer i want to be an <laughs> <laughs> the anti-influencer, which would make you, in a way, ironically, an influencer. That's what I was thinking the other day. Is there a way that I can be an anti-influencer? But well, one thing I'm curious about with, with FUBAR, now, I want to know how that project came to you. Or did you audition for it? Did somebody, did somebody reach out to you and say, hey, we have this, I th we think you're right for this thing. How did that come together for you? It was an audition. And it was uh, um, called, at the time, the Untitled Honor Schwarzenegger Project. And I was immediately... 
curious and attracted to it. And then um, there were two long scenes that I had to prepare for the audition. And it was a self-tape because it's the age of COVID and that's <clears throat> when it was going all, you know, you don't meet anybody. And so... Which, you know, in L.A., in L.A., that's got to be nice because you don't have to go through driving. Yeah. And uh, th- then you got to make sure that everything's shot right with the lighting. You want to look at it, look nice. But um, it, do you like the self-tape thing or do you do you prefer to be in the room? I didn't. I'm getting used to that, too. I didn't. It, it It's like acting in a vacuum a little bit. I, you know, it's like you don't, you know, like... But there are some good things, too. You know, you get to see what you... I used to obsess about what I did in the audition. How did I sound? What choices did I make? Did I do what I thought I did? And then you forget because you're in the moment. And now I know what I do. So in a way, it's a lot easier to, I liked it. If they didn't get it, if they didn't choose me, you know, it's their loss because I liked what I did or I could do better next time. So it's, 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 a, it's a little bit more control. Um, but I'm, I miss uh, the in-person meetings. But So this, the way football came about was a self-tape. And they gave us, they gave me some time to prepare, which was nice. And um, I immediately liked the character because it had a lot in common with some of the, of of who I am. Uh, Unlike many other characters that I've done in the past, uh, her romantic side, her vulnerability and strength, and uh, the fact that she puts family first, the fact that um, uh, she, she, she's, passionate and unpredictable many things that I felt like um uh, there were that I could draw from my own personal life so that was nice well like I said I've only seen the first episode but it seems like this is somebody a character who really is holding their own with Schwarzenegger mm-hmm. she's actually in some way has as my people say chutzpah you know she's you know it, it because the I, I, like again I've only seen the first episode but you're you're divorced you're no longer together but you're still sort of in inter- you know it's kind of in the first episode it's not totally clear on what this relationship is it, it, the, yes you, you're so um insightful by getting all of that just from the first episode it, it's true this is the guy that wants her back so he's always coming into my home he never knocking you know like always there for and then there's still this uh, great connection that they had they share this amazing love they really truly had it, uh, but he's disappointed her so many times. She's detached now and said, like, okay, this guy had the lovable, irresistible, but unreliable, and she's moved on. Um, uh, so part of the challenge was be- being that uh, comfortable and around Arnold without having met him before. Um, right. because again, Zoom. He, he, he's definitely got a, a presence about him. I remember I did a press junket for True Lies. We were at the Four Seasons Beverly oh. Hills and I walked outside after the junket. I was going to go get something to eat, probably Cantor's Deli. <laughs> and I see his, 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 this is 1994. He has a Humvee outside, personalized license plate says Terminator. I'm like, this guy is not bashful whatsoever in the slightest. You know? <laughs> but, True. I mean, but, but it is a different character for him. It, it, you know, it's it's a it's a different side of him. It's a different side, maybe from what we're traditionally used to seeing from you as well. And I think that's kind of what makes it fun. It's a little bit different. And but I, I am curious for if we were to hit rewind and compare your early <laughs> career to now. Are you having just as much fun? Do you like kind of turning the corner and now playing the mother, the relationship between empty nest, you know, post is it, is it is fun for you? Is it a different it's, challenge? What, what's this like for you now? It was great. And, and getting this, her role, you'll see it grows a lot. Um, her character, you, you get, you get to see different sides and of her personality and a, a little bit of an emotional roller coaster. Um, and it, 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 it really is a, a gift to get a role like this at this time. And yes, of course, you. Uh, part of the thing she goes through is uh, seeing her daughter make her own, the same mistakes and repeat, sort of recreate what, it, what has happened to her in her relationship, uh, neglecting her relationship. So sometimes you try to have your kids 
not make the same mistakes as you've done, but you don't succeed. You try to lead by example and you go, yeah, I haven't really figured this one out yet. So, you know, it's like, and, 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 <laughs> you know, you, you learn as you go. It's a really interesting concept. It's different. And I enjoyed it. My daughter enjoyed it, whether she'll admit it or not, because she kept looking up from her phone. So I know that's how she liked it, you know. Um, but before we get going, I I always like to kind of touch on my what I call my uh, seven questions. Just a little additional get to know ah. you. Just a little fun. And we kind of already touched on the first question a little bit. But, hey, I still love talking food ah. uh, what is your favorite comfort food something that you know at the end of the day you're just like oh, I just want to sit down glass of wine eat this what, something that just kind of make you feel better when you eat I have it. one that I cannot resist is cheese I love cheese well I have to ask what kind of cheese or is it just you know any kind of cheese or do you have specific any, kinds? any kind of cheese you know like I try to avoid bread but it's uh, mostly harder cheeses like I like parmesan cheese or like um uh, Swiss. I like a pecorino myself. That's my it's favorite. That's salty, so I go to Italian. But with, by itself? Not by itself. I like pecorino in the way people like to use Parmesan. Oh, I think it adds yes. a little bit more yes, flavor. Yes, yes. Uh, but, but cheese and wine and crackers, you know. You know, it's funny. My children actually enjoy the stinky, funky, kind of semi-soft cheese. Oh, oh, yeah. The ones that really smell, but they taste really good. Wow, um, sophisticated. And, you know, when it's been sitting in your refrigerator too long. <laughs> uh, but, yeah. because <clears throat> it is. But I, I'm a big cheese fan. All It's the only thing probably that would keep me from being vegan is I love cheese. Uh. Now, if you were to sit down for three people, living or not, uh, just have a cup of coffee. You're talking for a few hours. It's you and three people. Who would those three people be? Who would you really enjoy talking story with? Uh, three people, living or not. Uh, yeah, exactly, yeah. Uh, wow, I would like maybe Shakespeare. <laughs> um, Picasso. And, uh, oh, no, wait. Um, Leonardo da Vinci. Um Oh, of course, yeah. Actually, I talked to somebody yesterday who said the same thing. Because what was Da Vinci not into? He was a genius. Da Vinci seems like it'd be a wonderful conversation. I want to think of a woman, and um, it's, it's so sad that I'm coming up only with my song. I want to think of a woman, and um, Meryl Streep. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. Uh, she, uh, she is such a chameleon. She could pretty much, you know do almost anything it seems like um but yeah that that would be a wonderful conversation for uh, it would have to be cappuccino or espresso of course yes next question if you were to go back when you were young uh who was your first celebrity crush when you were young that one guy you saw in film like oh you know you just had a crush on him who would that be it was steve mcqueen oh no, I... of course any favorite any specific movie from steve mcqueen you yeah, i can't remember because it's so vague i was I'm so young i don't even know um Yes, also James Kahn. He did a movie called Roller Roller something. Rollerball. Uh, 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 ro Rollerball. You know, I've never seen. I was just listening to. Uh, he was on a podcast the other day with his son. Was on a oh. podcast, uh, uh, and they were talking about how Rollerball still holds up as a really? great movie now. Oh yeah, and and I, 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 but I've never seen that, and I, I've always wanted to. James Kahn was just. Uh, all the way to the first time I saw him, I remember it was uh, uh, it was either Brian's song or no, it was of course Godfather. It was mm. you know one of them, but James Conn was wonderful. Um, now the Deer Hunter. I mean, my God, I remember the movie. Sorry, it was scary. The Deer Hunter. The Deer Hunter yeah. it was the movie that I. Yes, the Deer Hunter. There you go. That was the movie that I was thinking about before. It just came to me. I had to... That was such a unique era for movies back then. That was that was that was just a unique time for movies. I, I got to go back into now with all the streamers, the Netflix and Amazon Prime. I got to go dive into some of these older movies with my children and introduce them to them. That would be wonderful. Um, now, now, one question I do have. Uh, the next question is: If you're going to be living on an island, it's a beautiful island. You, you're not stranded there. Or anything you love there, maybe you have a nice place to live. But for one year, you don't have streaming or anything else. You have to bring a DVD if you want to watch a movie, uh, and a CD if you want to listen to an album. What movie and what album are you going to bring with you to keep you company throughout that year? The, just one movie. It's just got to be. It's just got to be one. Maybe if you got a couple, we'll, we'll allow an extra one. Why I not? would bring Barefoot, Barefoot in the Park, and what? That's a movie, and then what else? Uh, a, a CD. Or a, a, an album, or music. You know, something for music. And even if you want to throw it, some people don't really think of CDs or music. They also want to put a book in there. They like they like to read. But uh, yeah, something musically, an album that you would like to bring. I would something from you too, or or uh, the police. And then a book, it would be something like maybe Siddhartha or The Road Less Traveled or something like that. Now, 
if you, the next question, if you were to, these are great questions. Yeah. Well, thank, well, thank you. Um, I love but, them. I'm like what, listening. What's going to be next? I got to tell my kids. See, Daddy knows yeah. what he's doing. <laughs> but if you were to uh, define for you what a perfect day is, from the time you get up in the morning till the time you go to sleep, the component parts, the pieces of a perfect day for you, what would those be? Has a great night's sleep, like a long. What is that? <laughs> right, uh, a great night's sleep. Like it starts with my son going to bed early or something, or like me. And then, um, uh, yeah, coffee. Maybe the time to, to work out. I miss sauna or like that stuff like that. And I miss since ever since COVID, I haven't gone to the gym very much, so I do it all at home, which is a little boring. Um, and then, oh my God, getting a, a phone call that you got a job, um, you booked a part. That's perfect. Even without the coffee, I could skip the coffee and say, "Oh, you got you got that." I still see. I'm, it's it, what I do is so addictive that even if it's a part that uh, I don't even care for very much, just not getting it. You like the work. It seems like you just like the work. You like yeah, the process. I, I really it seems do like. like it. Yes, I really like enjoy it. Yes, it's fun. So then, what else? But um, dinner with a great dinner with friends. Uh, it mostly has to do with. My son being happy to uh, my great news from my family in Italy or um, uh, what makes a good day, feeling good, exercising. It sounds like you're not a very sedentary person. You like to be in motion. Is that a good thing to say? Does yeah. it sound accurate? I wonder what I, I would be curious to, to hear what other people have said. You know, like for me, it, yes, it has to do with, the, uh, I guess, other people's emotions too. What happens? Well, most people I speak with, that answer usually ends up being with family at the end of the day or good friends with some kind of a meal, a way to finish uh, the evening. Um, it, it, it is very interesting because everybody views a day a little bit different. Some people like their meditative, quiet uh-huh. time to themselves. Some people like to do to be going, you know. So it's that's that's a beautiful thing. Everybody's a little yeah, different, right? and perfection for everybody is different. Yes, you know, yes, perfect yes, day. Yes. Now, if you weren't doing what you were doing now for a living, what you have been doing for many years that you obviously love so much, what would be your vocation? What would be the other thing that you would do that would you feel would bring you joy? You know, I I, uh, I would have loved, I would like to maybe a lawyer, an attorney, just because you'd have to, you can defend yourself always. I, I mean, if I if something I miss, it's it's a <laughs> law degree. I've always said, you know, when they're, I wish I had a law degree for this and that. And, um, so, yes, or a teacher. But an attorney would be good. You're the only one that's ever said attorney, but that's very that's very interesting to me. I think that's being able to, what you could do for other people potentially, I think that's a nice thing, being able to argue. Um, I think uh, Tom Hanks said it best. He wouldn't want to do it because it's like doing homework for a living, you know. True, but but it would give me such, you know, the ability to, to not necessarily practice it. So that mostly I was jealous of a law degree. Not maybe, I don't know if I would make a good, attorney. maybe a judge. I would make a good judge because I'm very fair. <laughs> but that's a lot of work. They have those judge shows in the middle of the day. If they had one where, I'm just giving you some ideas. If you were a judge, I'm just saying that could be one where you could put your own spin on it. That right? would be... That would be kind of. I would watch it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I also like. Uh, but I'm, I'm also very patient, so I think I could make a good teacher because I'm patient. The wonderful thing is that you still really enjoy what you do. You know, this is it doesn't feel like just a job you have to do. It seems no, like you're still I very passionate it, yeah. about it. I think we should all. I think we should all be so lucky to still do something for so long and be. I feel like I'm very fortunate. I still love what I do. Isn't I don't. Yes, you certainly. Yes, if you can do that for a living, I'm, that's a gift, really. And for me to have known it at an early age, I didn't have to go through that confusion. Of what am I going to do with my life? I, I, want, I knew what I wanted to do. Now the question is whether I could do it or not. And luckily, you know, I was able to do it. I, I think you're doing a wonderful job. And I think, I think FUBAR is a wonderful progression to kind of reintroduce you to some folks who maybe haven't watched some of your other things. I, I, I think it's fun. I can't wait to get to the next episodes. But I have one last question. If you were to jump into a DeLorean, you remember those DeLoreans, and you were to travel back in oh. time, you know, uh, and to when you're 16 years old, and a piece of advice you would give yourself, um, either to make the moment you were living in better somehow, or to put you on a better track for the future, just a, a piece of advice you would give uh, 16-year-old Fabiana. I don't stress so much. It'll be okay. <laughs> 
you don't have to be perfect. You know, yeah. That's you're asking before. What do other people say? That is something I hear frequently. Because don't we distress when we're kids and worry about what's next? And if you just just enjoy the ride, yeah, I, I love that. That's perfect. And don't perfect. take yourself too serious. You know, I was so intense. I was very intense when I was young. And I was like, relax. You know, <laughs> I mean, because so, you miss out on other things in life. I was so focused. Um, yeah, it's. I saw a quote the other day. It said, "You spend this portion of your life being the person you should have been way back then, but you couldn't have gotten there unless you went through all of the things you went through." You know. True. Absolutely. I, I so appreciate you, you taking time out with me today. It's been it's been fun, and and, and like I said, uh, b- b- summer school was one of my Mount Rushmore top eighties movies, and and I. Oh my god! Such a sweet experience. Again, Fabiana, thank you so, 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 so much. Your time with me is very special. And I know you're a busy lady, so I, again, additionally appreciate that. This was great. Fun. Best of luck with Food Bar. I'm going to go watch the rest of the episodes this weekend. And, uh, and I wish you nothing but the best. I appreciate it. Thank you. Have a great long weekend. Bye. All right, there you go. The lovely Fabiana Udinio. Enjoyed that chat so much. Yeah, a little trip down memory lane talking about summer school. But, of course, don't miss her right now. You can find FUBAR on Netflix. It is, uh, it's a good ride. It's a lot of fun. So uh, check it out. And I want to thank you again for being a part of what we got going on here. Thank you for coming uh, every week and checking out the show. Or if you're brand new to the show, thank you for being a part of what we got going on. You're part of the family now. So make sure to head to storyandcraftpod.com. Once again, storyandcraftpod.com. It's pretty much everything about the show in one spot. But of course, you can find the show everywhere you catch your podcasts. And uh, that includes now YouTube. Uh, just go to youtube.com forward slash the little et sign story and craft. Again, youtube.com forward slash at Story and Craft. Uh, a lot of folks been discovering the show over the last uh, couple weeks through YouTube. So, uh, hey, if that's where you like to listen to podcasts, go for it. Uh, thank you again. Really means a lot that you uh, stop by and uh, check out what I got going on here. Great shows, really cool shows are coming. Uh, so, um, you know, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to tease you too much, but some cool stuff is coming up. Uh, and uh, hey, I want you to go have a safe, fun. Uh, Whatever you're up to this weekend, this week, this evening, this morning, wherever and whenever you're listening, make this the best day yet. Uh, Thank you so much. Talk to you next time right here on Story and Craft. That's it for this episode of Story and Craft. Join Mark next week for more conversation right here on Story and Craft. Story and Craft is a presentation of Mark Preston Productions, LLC. Executive producer is Mark Preston. Associate producer is Zachary Holden. Please rate and review Story and Craft on Apple Podcasts. Don't forget to subscribe to the show on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, or your favorite podcast app. You can subscribe to show updates and stay in the know. Just head to storyandcraftpod.com and sign up for the newsletter. I'm Emma Dillon. See you next time. And remember, keep telling your story. Come on.